Hello, everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you for coming out. My name is Adam Markowitz. I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Drata, the world's most advanced compliance automation platform. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Drata's first 140 days building on AWS, um, from C to Series A, and now just recently Series B. Uh, before jumping in, a little bit more about myself. Prior to Drata, I was the founder and CEO at Portfolium, an academic e-portfolio network that was acquired by Instructure in 2019. And then prior to Portfolium, I was an aerospace engineer working on NASA's space shuttle program until 2011 when NASA retired the fleet. Also be joined by Daniel Marashlian, co-founder, CTO at Portfolium, and also here at Drata. Daniel's going to hop up and talk more about how we've used AWS to really accelerate our unprecedented growth rate. So agenda-wise, uh, we're going to be hitting on the following topics. Uh, first, I'll do a quick introduction to compliance for software companies. Um, discuss why security compliance is important and more prevalent today than ever before. We'll talk a little bit about Drata's automation first approach to compliance and how it's helping hundreds of companies today really automate their compliance programs. Um, although Drata did recently just reach unicorn status, it's still very much a startup. So we'll discuss the challenges of hyper growth, uh, why we decided to build on AWS and how that's actually helped enable us to grow as fast as we have. So setting the stage here a little bit, uh, in order to understand compliance and in the world of SaaS today, it's important to first understand the state of security. Uh, year after year, we're seeing data breach increases in size and scope. Um, there's headlines just about every other week, it seems, of a major breach or attack on a large company, hospital, retail store. And we're talking about billions of pieces of data being exposed and billions of dollars lost as a result. Uh, many argue that the attacks themselves are still relatively simple. Um, and that there's just more people and data in the cloud than ever before to expose. So in other words, a lot of the same old tricks are still working. Uh, phishing attacks are still the most common cause of data breaches in 2021. I'm sure everyone knows what phishing is, but just in case, it's phishing's a malicious, fake, phony uh, email or message um, that is sent to you or your employees meant to get sensitive information from you or install malware on, on your machine. Um, relatively simple, but also relatively simple to click and quickly go down a very wrong path. Uh, we recently received an email from what appeared to be Carta asking our employees to accept their stock option grants. And you can imagine how uh, hastily someone might click and very quickly go down a, a wrong path. And so whether it's phishing or really any other kind of attack, when a breach occurs, it could almost always be tracked to back to a lack of proper security controls at a company or a lapse in enforcing those controls. I'll double click on that here in a second. but. Um, it's worth pointing out the move towards hybrid work environments, which of course now accelerated by the pandemic, um, has really made just it that much more important uh, to protect uh, data security. So with the rise of remote work, we see a rise in data breaches and the cost of those breaches. I was saying when these breaches occur, it can almost always be tracked back to a lack of proper security controls being in place, or again, a lapse in enforcing those controls. But it's important that we all understand just what we mean by security controls. There, there could be startups out there pursuing their very first compliance audit, so it's, it's good to make sure we're all on the same page. A control is really anything, any tool, policy, or procedure you put in place at your company to help prevent a bad thing from happening or to help ensure a good thing happening. I always like to use the bicycle helmet analogy. The helmet is a control against preventing a, a brain injury in, in an accident. In our world of SaaS, common security controls include encrypting data in transit and at rest. Um, enforcing multi-factor authentication for IAM users, locking down public access to S3 buckets. These are real examples of three out of potentially hundreds of security controls that if you're building on AWS, you're going to want to have in place and definitely have in place before going into any kind of compliance audit, which is the magic word here, what all this has to do with compliance. Um, it's one thing to say that you have these security controls in place at your company. It's another to say that they remain in place day after day, month after month as your company grows. Um, but if I'm about to do business with your company and in doing that business, your software is going to have access to my customer's data. I need more than just your word. I need assurance, preferably independent, accredited, third-party assurance. And, and that's exactly what compliance audits are. These logos here at the top are just a few of the most common compliance frameworks that SaaS companies today are being audited against in order to provide their customers with that assurance of their security program. For example, the top left logo there, SOC 2. A SOC 2 report is something that your company receives after completing a SOC 2 audit. It is an attestation from an independent auditor. It's attesting to the design and operating effectiveness of your controls to meet very specific criteria, standard for security. In the last few years, we've 
seeing firsthand SOC 2 reports become the minimum bar for SaaS improving your security posture. It's partly because SOC 2 very bro broadly applies to any company that stores or processes data in the cloud, which is every company these days, especially every SaaS company. Um, audits themselves can cost tens of thousands of dollars, but far more costly is the time it takes for companies to get and then stay audit ready. It's hundreds of hours typically per year. And I say stay audit ready because audits aren't a one-time thing. SOC 2, for example, is an annual audit where you're proving you stayed compliant over the prior 12-month period. Uh, because it's so time intensive, companies, startups especially, take the, we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get their approach. Uh, we can certainly empathize in a prior life. That was a, an approach we mistakenly took. Um, and what ends up happening is you have a large opportunity or deal on the table that requires a SOC 2 report, and then it's a mad dash rush to try to proactively or retroactively prove compliance. Um, it ends up costing more money, taking more time, and, and causing a lot more stress. Um, compliance, when done earlier, is faster, cheaper, and then easier to maintain, which is why we launched Strata uh, to put security and compliance on autopilot to really save companies these hundreds of hours per year by delivering on a new automation-first approach. So Drata connects to its customer's tech stack, from AWS, of course, to G Suite, Gusto, Jira, over 50 integrations, everything in between to monitor automatically all of your controls, to give you real-time alerts when gaps are identified, and then automatically collect evidence of these controls, all pre-mapped to various frameworks like SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more. And this really allows companies, large and small, to confidently know where they stand any given day of the year when it comes to their security compliance posture really have that real-time view of the operating effectiveness of your controls um, and obviously complete audits very quickly and efficiently. So we've had startups under 50 employees go from scratch, literally from scratch, to SOC 2 Type 1 audit ready in as little as two weeks. Um, and then we've had companies around 10,000 employees save hundreds of hours just in their first year of maintaining their already existing compliance programs by, of course, delivering on this automation-first approach. So Drata provides everything from policy templates, internal risk assessments, real-time reporting, dashboard so again you know exactly how compliant you are any given day of the year and it's those integrations those 50 plus integrations that really allow for that continuous automated monitoring and evidence collection of controls here's a closer look at our first 140 days uh, we launched out of stealth in the middle of january this year and we were very happy that by the end of february we were iterating very quickly on the product with the voices of over 100 early customers in our ears from Abnormal Security, ClearCo, Smart Recruiters, and Spot by NetApp. In June, we raised our Series A, uh, led by GGV Capital, along with uh, Okta Ventures. And then we were also happy to include uh, SVCI, Silicon Valley CISO Investors, which is a group made up of CISOs from the top 60 or so uh, SaaS companies in the world, all of whom had experienced the very problem we were solving with Drata, of course. So Drata is not our first startup, uh, but uh, if you're a startup founder out there, I could. Say you're among a rare breed who has the, uh, the kind of conviction to challenge the status quo and then even more conviction to actually follow through on that challenge. And I can tell you that even with all the conviction in the world, we just didn't expect to grow Drata as quickly as we have. And there are certainly challenges that come with hyper growth. Um, they call them good problems to have, uh, but at the end of the day, there's still, still problems that you want to solve. And so one of those good problems was scaling our infrastructure to support and keep up with the rapid growth in our customer base. Uh, we needed tools that could help facilitate and actually expedite that growth. And so happy to hand it over to Daniel Morashian to walk through why we chose AWS and how that has actually helped accelerate our growth. You probably don't even need the microphone. <laughs> yes, I, I, I am loud. But welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel Morashian. I'm the CTO at, here at Drata, uh, one of the co-founders with the team. But let's talk a little bit more about technology. All right, so let's start kind of high level. And why did we choose AWS? So there's two main reasons. Let's dive into the first one. So at Trust at Drata, that is our core at our ethos. It's our number one value of our business. Uh, you know, as a security and compliance company, you would hope that we can tr <laughs> you can trust the data that you're giving to us as we can help you, you understand the perspective and compliance of your company. So you can pass that trust onto your customers. It's at the center of everything we do. And we, when we evaluated some of the other vendors in the space, I, we, I really felt that AWS was the closest to this uh, value that we hold true. From the education and partnership 
and the tooling and the open source software community, everything kind of checked the boxes for the security requirements that we needed. It has the best in class, most secure options for cloud provided you know, uh, services. And uh, what was also interesting, and just me being a student of uh, startups as it's been my career, uh, you know, AWS is definitely the 800 pound gorilla in this space. And I knew as we ventured into this space, uh, the majority, strong majority of our customers would be AWS customers as well. And that has hold, held true. Maybe around 80% of our customers are on AWS. And the reason why I love that is, uh, we'll dive a little bit more into it, but that uh, some of the tools that AWS allows you to do cross account communication for what we need to do at the API level. Obviously, uh, in the core of automation, and that's where the start of Drata happened, was we want to automate this compliance problem. And we saw how well AWS did this on their side of automation to help us achieve our goals. So, you know, that comes from, uh, you know, really simply uh, with the auto scaling groups to disaster recovery to guard duty, um, you know, you name it, uh, AWS really allows us to automate some of that. So, you know, into some of those tools, uh, in our first 140 days, uh, RDS, everyone's familiar with that, the Relational Database Service, that is a critical, critical point. If any of you, uh, you know, nerds in the audience have ever uh, managed a database yourselves or been a DBA, that is no fun sometimes. Uh, and you know, the tool that RDS allows you to do to grow, to uh, auto scale up the disk, to be able to back it up automatically, restore it automatically, the just in time restores, all of that is amazing. Guard duty is yet another amazing tool there that we were able to utilize from day one, not only helping with our own compliance, uh, which I was always a fun believer that we're our first customer, so that was, a, that was a good one, but guard duty allowed us to you know, really get a good sense of the events that were going on uh, on our infrastructure. So uh, back to the, you know, the AWS to AWS communication. So through role assumption, uh, it, was, it allows us to go to our customers that use AWS and assume a role very securely where we don't need to hold any security tokens or keys we're able to just get that proper you know, access to do the role assumption. And from there, at first, we said, oh, there's a great managed policy called read only. That's all we want. We just want to be able to read you know, people's customers. But even in the spirit of compliance and least privilege, there's actually a managed policy called security audit. And that's what we use. It's even lower uh, pr privilege than read only. So just more and more things like that that allow us to do our jobs with a very security-minded um, position. There's also tools like Fargate. And uh, let's dive into Fargate. So let's talk a little bit about first around serverless and around security forward thinking. So with Fargate, uh, if a lot of you guys know, there's kind of two flavors. There's ECS and EKS for the containers or Kubernetes. And we're, we're a user of Fargate. We use the ECS option. And what I love about Fargate is, yeah, it helps you do the compute. But I don't want to manage servers. I don't want to manage uh, patching. I don't want to manage uh, state of a machine. I want to be able to just code it. Uh, we use Terraform, define what we need. And if we need a new version, you throw out the old one and replace in the new one. So some things like that that really help us always focus on the software and never focus on the hardware and the security of it, knowing that AWS and the tooling around that really helps us scale. Um, so then we go into, you know, uh, that's around the vulnerability scanning. So around the security forward thinking, you know, from guard duty, um, and various other network level activities, we always know that AWS has that top level check, right? The network, the switches, the top level inf inbound uh, infrastructure. We don't need to worry about any of that. And that's amazing. And so again, it always, every decision was, how can we always get back to focusing on Drata, focus on our customers, and yet have AWS hold our back to you know, being forward thinking around security. So the next ones are kind of around scalability and architecture. So Fargate, to talk a little bit about it um, as we dove in, but you can set up auto scaling groups very similar to the EC2 as well. 
But uh, what's nice is in those auto scaling groups in Fargate and the serverless expansion, again, you don't need to really worry too much about uh, compute and how those spin up. It just consumes up, consumes down on the pricing. Um, that's great. There's things like the AWS command line interface. When people hear serverless, people love it, but then the operators out there sometimes don't like it because <laughs> they're all of us as the operators are used to getting into the machine and running a top on the machine, looking at the CPU, looking at the metrics. In the serverless world, you know, theoretically, there's not a server, theoretically. And uh, so we, what we do is we're able to even sometimes use things like the AWS command line interface and get one layer deeper if we do need to get there. So being, have, you know, having those tools, being able to support that architecture is great. And really what all of that boils down to is being able to take these hundreds of services that AWS has and be able to really leverage them to automate your infrastructure, eliminate manual process so you can always get back to your customers and your product, and really just get it done faster while knowing that you can just have the you know, full trust in security and then therefore compliance uh, in AWS. And that's where it always comes back to for us is trust. And I want to circle back up on that. Is, you know, as again, as the core foundation of Drata uh, at our ethos is trust. I always say to the sales team, every time we talk to a prospect, it's about how do we instill trust in that communication at the top. I tell my developers every keystroke of code, think about trust. How could someone break this? How could someone hack this? Are we following best practices? Are we using the right tools? Um, and AWS, I think, has been the star center at all of that. So in that, Lou, let's uh, pass it back over to Adam. All right. AWS Activate. How many people know what AWS Activate is? All right, good. Cool. Uh, so it's another great way we've been working with AWS uh, is through the Activate network. Uh, it's really been a win-win for us. First, we enjoyed preferred pricing on some really critical tools that allowed us to really come out of the gates moving quickly. Uh, everything from Carta, Slack, HubSpot, Jira, Gusto, very, very long list of incredible preferred pricing. Um, but secondly, we're also able to provide Drata's exclusive offer for Activate companies, which was really great, obviously helped Drata with exposure, but also helped us reach a lot of startups that were building and scaling on AWS. Um, help them get SOC 2 and ISO audit ready quickly, this, of course, means more startups building on AWS with stronger security postures, which is the giant win-win that we were after. Um, when companies start early, I mentioned earlier that it's faster, cheaper, and easier to maintain. So it's been extra rewarding to work with a lot of startups who are coming out of the gates moving very quickly themselves. Um, once they complete their, their SOC 2 audits very quickly, um, they're able to accelerate their sales cycles. They're selling to more sophisticated buyers at that point. Um, they're expediting their security reviews. They're essentially more enterprise ready. Um, and then once they get it, obviously the automation first approach that Dorado delivers on really helps them maintain it. Because again, these are not one and done events. So where is Dorado now? Uh, now in our 10th month, um, continuing to only accelerate. Um, our customer base has grown 70% month over month on average all year since January when we launched. Uh, we recently raised our Series B, led by iconic growth, uh, investments from Alkion Capital and Salesforce Ventures, making Dorado one of the fastest SaaS companies ever to reach unicorn status, but again, we are just getting started. Uh, we've shipped more than 50 integrations. These integrations is how we plug into our customer's tech stack. Everything from, I mentioned earlier, right, GitHub, Okta, Slack, Gusto, over 50 integrations. Um, of course, AWS being one of those most critical and important integrations. Um, 50 plus is great in terms of quantity, but quality is more important. Um, it's really the breadth and depth of these integrations that allows Drata to deliver the most automated compliance platform and market. For now, well over 600 uh, customers from startups to mid-market and even enterprise. Um, in addition to SOC 2 and ISO 27001, we've expanded into HIPAA uh, and now soon PCI, um, and the list is going to continue to grow. So much more on the horizon. Again, just getting started, but thanks in part to AWS, uh, we're off to this unprecedented start. So thank you, AWS. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. Um, look forward to any questions or doubles ping pong challenges in the other room.